I want you to imagine sensing God calling you to talk about sex to the church. It happened to Julie Slattery, and I'm so glad she obeyed the shepherd's voice. If you don't know Julie, you should. She is a clinical psychologist, an author, a speaker, a mom, and the president and co-founder of a ministry called Authentic Intimacy. Put them in your bookmarks list for web pages because there's so many good resources there. She has a ministry devoted to teaching God's design for intimacy and sexuality. This is my time to remind you to hit that share button because this conversation is going to be one that lots of people are going to need and want to hear. Welcome back to Grounded, Julie. So good to be with you. Thanks for having me, Erin. Well, Julie, I was doing my homework as I am prone to do for Grounded to prep for this interview. And on your site, you said this. Everywhere I look, I see lives ruined by unfulfilled promises of love and sexual brokenness. God is able to redeem our pain and restore us to wholeness when we seek his truth and healing. Really good writing there, the writer in me wants to say. But uh, it makes me just think we should probably pray before we dive into this conversation because sexual brokenness Mm -hmm. is so pervasive. Would you do that, Honor? Would you just pray for those who will eventually hear this interview? I would love to. Lord, I thank you that you are concerned about every area of our life, including our sexuality. Uh, You're with us all the time. You're with us when we are tempted. You're with us even when we sin. Uh, You're with us when we were wounded. Lord, you're with us as we call out to you in pain. And Lord, I just pray that uh, each woman that uh, is listening to this or watching this would have the sense of your presence and your deep love, not your condemnation, Lord, but your invitation to healing and to restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, Well, I think if there was one thing single women in the church might say, it might be, uh, but what about us? Uh, Because we do sometimes talk about sexuality, but not necessarily in the terms that the single women need to hear. What other messages do you think single Christian women are getting in their churches about sexuality? What do you think they are hearing? Well, I think a lot of what they're hearing, unfortunately, is sort of a sanctified echo of what the world is saying, which is that you can't be a complete person if you don't have sex. In the church, we say you can't be a complete woman if you're not married, um, which is implied you're having sex, too. So I think single women are really struggling with um, with their value, with their worth, uh, with this feeling that my life must be incomplete physically and relationally and even spiritually if I'm not in an intimate relationship or having sex. Um, So I think that sort of undergirds this. There's also a lot of confusion. Even when we talk about being single and sexual, a lot of single women and married women equate sexuality with actually having sex and not realizing that our sexuality is part of our humanity. It doesn't appear when we get married. It doesn't go away if we're single or widowed or divorced. We're always sexual people, and that's by God's design. And so really helping single women and married women understand that their sexuality is about a lot more than just what they're doing with their bodies is an important part of this message. Yeah, I've also heard you say that we're all sexually broken, which has been so liberating for me. It's not the single woman who's not having sex, who's sexually broken. It's not the married woman who is having sex, who's sexually broken. Like we all have that shared brokenness, which is what gets us to Jesus. So I love that. You say there's a spiritual purpose for our sexuality right now, right this moment, even if we aren't married and having sex. So I would love to hear more about that. What is the purpose of our sexuality? Well, Dana did a great job of introducing uh, the concept, but the idea is that God is always revealing through his creation. He reveals through everything he made. And you can't read a chapter of the Bible without seeing it referring to some sort of physical creation to explain the nature of God, whether it's trees or sheep and wolves or vineyards or hunger and thirst. And the same is true with our sexuality. God reveals uh, through male and female. 
He reveals through our longings. He reveals through the covenant of marriage. He even reveals through the pain of brokenness when covenant has been broken. And as Dana alluded to, all of that is meant to reveal the nature of how God pursues us and loves his people with a covenant love. He loves us with passion, with intimate knowing. He loves us with sacrificial giving. And so all of that is meant to uh, be revealed through our sexuality. And it's revealed in different aspects, whether you're single or married or what your journey is, But our sexuality has so much significance because it's meant to be teaching us about the nature of how God loves us. It's so good because it separates the idea that my sexuality is all about myself and gratifying myself and pleasing myself if it points to a higher truth. That's so important. I saw a post, Julie, on social media. I don't even know where I saw it, but it made me laugh because honestly, I could relate. It was something like uh, when God gives you the sex drive of a frat boy and the morals of a nun. So it's this idea of like, I want to obey scripture, but I have this drive inside of me. So I think there are going to be women who see this and they have a sex drive and maybe it's a strong one but she's not married and maybe there's no guy in sight. What does she do with that sex drive as she's waiting and seeing if God's going to give her a husband? Yeah, I think part of it is understanding that our sex drive is so much more than just the physical. Now, the physical is a real thing, particularly for women, we'll say at different times in my cycle, like I just feel this physical urge And God has given us um, ways to address those physical urges, even things like exercise and prayer release some of the same kind of endorphins that having sex would do. So there is a physical side of this, but I think for most women, it goes so far beyond the physical, but we tend to put sexual desire as only physical without recognizing that what can be fueling that is loneliness, boredom, you're feeling like no one loves me or I'm not someone's someone. It can be wounds from the past. Uh, and so all these other things kind of pour into the feeling of, I need to have sex, I need to be with a man, I need to be with somebody, instead of realizing that there's layers to what we experience a sexual drive and desire. And so I think for a lot of women, and this is not just for single women, there are a lot of married women for whom sex is not what they hoped it would be, and they have deep longings. And so we have to look at the layers of, God, what am I really longing for? And how can I bring those longings to you? How can I bring my wounds to you and address them in healthier ways than just saying, hey, you know, a hookup or a relationship is going to solve that problem? Um, So there's a lot more to it than I think we give credit to when we just say there's a, a physical longing. So true. Well, I I have to confess something. I wasn't single very long. I'd had a boyfriend from, I don't know, like probably preschool on. Um, And I got married really young. I got engaged at 18, married at 21. And so I had to tap into a a friend to get some questions for this. Bethany Beal from Girl Defined was single a lot longer than she wanted to be. I said, Bethany, what do I ask Julie? She's a huge uh, fan of yours, by the way. She just adores you. But she sent me this really good question, which I wouldn't have thought of. How can I prepare for sex on my honeymoon in an appropriate way? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the most important way you prepare is how you think about sex. And I've been in this field of talking about sexuality for the last decade, and I just keep learning and learning and learning. And I think the number one thing I've learned is that Christians don't know how to think rightly about their sexuality. Um, They've adopted some traditional narratives that haven't been particularly helpful about God's design for sex. They're influenced by the culture, which is really not helpful. And so you can go to your OBGYN, which you should. You can read a book on technique. But more importantly is being grounded in a biblical understanding of the purpose of sex. What is the purpose of my sexuality as a single woman? But then let's translate that. If sex is meant to be a, a revelation of God's covenant love, 
what does that practically even look like in marriage and understanding that it's going to be a journey, that your wedding night is the beginning of that journey, whether it is a positive experience or a frustrating experience, it's just the beginning of building this celebration of covenant love. And so my encouragement would be um, to, to get your hands on resources that will really dig deeper and help you and your husband to be have the right perspective of why God created sex and gave it to you as a gift in the first place. That's so helpful. Uh, my husband and I definitely had that moment when we got to our hotel room after the wedding where we were like, we, we're we clueless, but we figured it out yeah. together. So I think it's also okay to go in unprepared. We're, last question, we're, we are in the midst of a sexual revolution. I, I don't think yeah. there's any way to really deny that. Um, what is the number one thing you want the church, those of us who are married, those of us who aren't married, those of us on whatever spectrum there is in terms of our sexuality, what is the number one thing you want the church to know about sexuality? Well, you know, I think so often we talk about sin and we talk about needing to defend against temptation of whatever kind related to sexuality and sin. But what the Bible talks about also is that we have been influenced by the thinking of the world. And uh, the idolatry of our culture will always infiltrate the thinking of the church. And so I go back to this theme that most of us uh, have a battle not just with sin, we have an unseen battle with how we think about sexuality, how we think about gender. And so my number one message would be, it is critical that we invite the Lord Jesus to redeem uh, our hearts and our minds so that we can see sexuality for what God created it to be and not just swat at sin with the world's understanding of sexuality underneath all that. And so that's my heart's desire. That's what I do, why I do what I do at Authentic Intimacy is to really help disciple um, God's people and how we think about sexuality uh, through the heart of God and through the lens of the scriptures. Mm, I so admire your unique ability to take this topic that can be uncomfortable and talk about it in ways that are wise and biblically grounded. You're actually going to be a part of a team leading a pre-conference at True Woman 22 on uh, biblical gender and sexuality. I'm so glad you're going to be there. Julie, if people want to find out more about your ministry, Authentic Intimacy, where do they go? Yeah, you can go to AuthenticIntimacy.com. You'll find everything we have there, online book studies, podcasts, blogs, whatever you might find helpful will be at that website, AuthenticIntimacy.com. Rich, I've only recently, I'm sorry to admit, become a listener of your podcast. And wow, what a wealth of information there too. You want to send us to that podcast, the name of the podcast and where we can listen? Sure. Yeah, it's called Java with Julie because I love coffee. So uh, Java with Julie, <laughs> no E on Julie. <laughs> yeah, good. It's I, I give it five stars. Highly recommend. Thanks for being with us, Julie.